2011-2012 budget process. Um, I think we'll begin, Ken offered to uh, begin by giving us a brief review of the overview of the budget. As you know, uh, <clears throat> the superintendent's recommended budget calls for a 2.2 percent increase in expenditures, uh, or $447,719. That equates to a 1.9 percent increase in property taxes, and that's just for the school portion. Uh, we don't know what the municipal budget, but what we're responsible for, if this budget was approved by the school board would increase property taxes 1.9%. Um, and I think on the average or the median priced home in Cape Elizabeth, that equates to $85 a year. Um, there are several significant increases in the recommended budget uh, in about six or seven different areas, and there are three um, decreases, which allows that budget to come in at 2.2%. And just quickly, the drivers of this budget, if you will, the significant ones are salary and benefits are up about $406,000. Now, that account normally uh, would be six or $700,000, but we have a tentative agreement with the Teachers Association, as you know, uh, for a very modest um, salary increase. So it allows that line to be about two hundred dollars or $300,000 less than it would be in most normal years. So uh, the salary and benefit increase, that's where all the money is in school budgets. You know, it's over 80 percent of our budget. And at the next workshop, <clears throat> the school board will be going over those lines um, so that there's complete understanding of staffing. That's, that's, that's really where the school budget is. There's some things in the buildings and <clears throat> facilities budget that um, were we really don't have that much control over. I mean, you know what the price of oil is doing, and we probably, when we put the budget together, uh, budgeted a, a conservative $3 a gallon, and that's something by the time you bring this budget to the town council, you might want to adjust, uh, because right now it's, it's much more expensive than that. The other thing in that, those lines, the property insurance is going up $7,000. And we have the new boiler, which, as I mentioned the other night, that's uh, going to increase uh, that account 32000 But that line would be a lot higher also if we didn't have the outstanding assistance of the town council. Um, so though building and facilities is up $100,000, um, those three areas are why. Every other account that uh, is in Greg's area of responsibility is in at the same amount as previous years or less. Uh, instructional support is up $47,000 because of the out-of-district tuition when you compare apples to apples um, because we were using federal stimulus money to fund some contracted services. You know, it shows that it's up 98000 but an apple-to-apple -apple comparison is just a 47000 for out-of-district tuition. Athletics is up $18,000, and I know at our next meeting you'll want to go over that to make sure you have absolute clarity. But the main reason why that is up is to make sure that we're in uh, compliance with Title IX regulations and also increasing the trainer. Historically, we've been over-budgeted um, in that area, and what we're budgeting or recommending that you budget next year is a more realistic accounting for uh, what we spend. And then the only other thing that's driving this budget up is transportation, and that's, you know, that's the diesel fuel. That's, uh, again, we've got a number in there that you might want to actually go in the opposite direction and increase. And the decreases in this budget, contingency is down $300,000. It's not that last year the school board increased, you know, that area by a large amount. <clears throat> I mean, last year the school board did increase the contingency account because we received some extra state funding. Um, we're not going to have that extra state funding, so the contingency line is back at what it um, has been historically. Which, as I pointed out, that's, that's an area when times get better, you've really got to increase. But because, you know, carrying a $70,000 contingency in a $22 million budget is pretty thin. Um, so 
it would be nice to have at least uh, double or triple that amount. But I don't think this is the economy where you can, you can start doing that. Um, believe it or not, the economy will improve and you'll be able to actually increase some lines like that, but not this year, probably not next year. Debt service is down 34,000 and um, there's some other accounts that are down about $8,000. So most of the accounts, I mean the story of this budget is the evaporation of federal stimulus money, but the other part uh, story of this budget is almost every other line that we can possibly control is at funding levels of previous years. So that's, that's the quick overview. Thank you. So what we had wanted to do, because there are a number of, this is a, this is a large budget, and we have three workshops in order to bring some order to the process, we wanted to take a look at, and we knew we were getting a late start tonight, we wanted to take a look at some of the areas that might be most easily dealt with. Um, and I sent an email to the board earlier uh, last week describing what those are, and Ken repeated those, that list today, so um, for the benefit of Everyone else, that list is technology, uh, debt service, health services, volunteer services, and office of the superintendent. So what, we're, what we'll be looking at tonight are those areas, um, and we've got three other accounts that we'll get to if we have time, um, but we'll otherwise be looking at those areas, um, and um, in particular, we're looking at the non-salary and benefit um, elements of those accounts. <laughs> Salary and benefits are one of the one of the big ticket item accounts that we'll be addressing in a future workshop. So, John, I miss, I'm sorry, I was trying to read. What was the last thing, the big ticket item we're going to cover in a future workshop? <clears throat> I didn't hear it. So we're look these these accounts exclude salaries and benefits. For example, the technology department budget excludes the salaries and benefits of the technology department personnel, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and if we get to the, the three schools, high school, uh, middle school, and Pond Cove, we'll be looking at the operational budget exclusive of salaries and benefits. Could I ask one question? It's an overview question. Just sure. We're going to try and cover tonight. Are we not going to try and cover tonight um, uh, so I guess I'll generalize and call it our three-year plan. Is that something we're not going to cover tonight? We're not covering that tonight. And I assume we're not going to cover some of the other items like contingency funds and undesignated funds. And uh, uh, I still, I think I got an explanation. What we'll do is we'll go over the, the course of the, the three workshops. We'll go through, if you look at page three of your, which is I believe the page you're open to, page three of the budget book, it lists that the, um, departments or accounts, the major departments or accounts in the budget. And what we're going to do is one by one go through those accounts. Mm -hmm. And tonight we're, we're addressing f the first five, not the first five in order, but those five that I listed. Could I just, um, I, I can tell this to you some other time, but there are two items that are not on this list that I think need to be discussed, which is the Medicaid monies we get and the I guess they call them the undesignated reserves, the undesignated fund. That, that's an item that's going to be vastly fluctuating. We're using. I think we need to. Is that part of the three-year plan discussion? Yes. I see Ken nodding. This okay. my eye. Because yep. <laughs> I, I may not be able to say the full time tonight. Those are the items I really care about. The items we're going to talk about tonight. They're not on those li this list because those are revenue items, right? And I, I'm just saying I, I may have to leave early, but the items you have listed, I was very satisfied with the reports that were made. I don't have any questions on that. I do have questions on the you, you, You're not going to have any questions tonight? You're tell, <laughs> telling me that now? <laughs> so That's great. Do we have a notary? I, 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 I will question your sanity for actually challenging me to raise questions. Oh, no, we're going to be here till 11. <laughs> that, okay. That's just plain foolish. Just like, <laughs> are, there any, are there any other overview questions? Um, no, I don't have any. OK. So then we will move to technology, the technology budget. Um, and what I'll do is just ask the members of the board if there are questions about the technology budget. 
Um, I had one question around um, professional development for you, Gary, and this is just a clarifying question around um, the Cape Elizabeth South Portland Summer Academy. Have we always paired up with South Portland for that? For the last two to three years we have. Mm -hmm. Prior to that we had done our own thing. Oh, okay, so it's, it's a collaborative math, or, you know, a collaborative effort between the two communities? It is. They provide some instructors and they also provide some funding okay. to help support it. Great. Okay. That's great. I was just curious about that and curious about, I know David mentioned um, some of the Google um, uh, information or the, you know, moving toward Google. And do you have any idea how much money that that's saving the district by, having, by moving us to um, a free service like that and, and cloud computing? And well, we, we moved to uh, Google for email. We had a uh, previous email server was first class. Mm -hmm. The annual license fees for that was around $5,000 a year. Mm -hmm. And it was hosted on a server here that we had to buy and maintain. Mm -hmm. um, Google's email is hosted by Google. So I was at a stage last year where I needed to upgrade that server too. So we probably saved about eight grand or so last year or this year just by moving to a new email service. Mm -hmm. um, Google Apps for Education provides a suite of tools much like a Microsoft Office type suite of tools. Um, that cost me, to put Microsoft Office on a computer cost me $52 per license. So if you're looking at 1,000 computers, it, you know, there's $52,000 right there. It's, a, it's potentially a teacher. Um, so we're moving more towards Google and open source alternatives. There's an open, open office alternative that we may need a few Microsoft Office licenses for some administrative key people, key personnel, but I think uh, we're moving towards the less expensive alternatives. Okay. Thank you. And if I could add, it, it should also be freeing up technology department people to, rather than installing Microsoft software on machines. Correct. Um, Correct. You, once you've installed a web browser, you have access to Google's applications. And right, because traditional software you install on a machine, and of course there's always patches and updates and things like that that need to be applied. So. The, you know, all of the, the labor that's involved with that disappears too. Google's updates happen by Google and they just happen to appear in the browser. That's great. <coughs> Other questions? Uh, yes, yeah, so on the um, staff development <coughs> line, um, it's $3,800 for, for the, in the proposed budget. Is this the only uh, money that will be allocated to staff development or professional development, or are there uh, dollars associated with salaries and benefits? For, for technology for the district, that, only, that amount includes the, the academy that we do with South Portland, that week-long academy, uh, which any staff can go to at no cost. We provide that and host that here. And it provides about a dozen people to go to a local uh, statewide conference that's, I'm, I'm, the, I'm biased, I'm the conference chair. I think it's a very <laughs> good conference and it's a good, um, it's a good bargain for, for, they get a good quality conference for what we pay, um, less than $100 per participant. So those, basically those two things are the biggest chunk of the professional development money. Uh, my thought, and I don't know how this works, but in 2008-2009 we had about $10,000 in professional development and I believe that was before technology integrators. Now your staff is larger. We've reduced professional development by almost 60 percent even though your staff is large and I think given our reliance on technology and it's a fantastic way to reduce costs in other areas, um, I think that's something we should consider is increasing our investment in professional development further supported by we're moving from Microsoft which probably has more customer ser service than Google which is more self-service so that's one area I think 
Um, I know we have a difficult uh, economic environment, but the return you get on professional development technology is, is tremendous, and I think it would serve us well to really reinvest and at least on a per tech staff member get it back to um, similar levels it was a few years ago. Yeah, and the reason that it's down lower too, or the reason I can justify that it's down lower, is, is basically part of the salaries of the tech integrators. I mean, that's what their job is, is, is professional development. So we're still spending some of that money, but just kind of in a different account. Other, Other questions? questions? I guess I, I have a follow-up. The, the professional development in your budget is for is the t professional development of your staff, right? Not the professional development that your staff provides to the teaching. I yeah, I haven't really included any professional development for my staff in these lean budget times. I have in the past, but I have not. So what is the staff? Either. The staff development, though, is that is that conference? We have that one conference that, that they go to, okay. and we rely on some of the uh, opportunities that are online that are less expensive and, and or free is what we're doing. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Will, will we see, I, I was glad you asked that question about the staff development. So will we see in the other departments, other staff development funds, but none of it will be in, uh, IT related. Correct. And but this this fund really represents the full, the school rather than your department. Did I? A large chunk of this goes to staff in all three schools. Right. Through and the through the conference opportunity and the uh, the Cape Academy. I guess the I I wish that we could divide that and have any. Um, Funds that came from different the other three the other departments be parentheses to put in those other um, schools under the other administrators so we could honestly see what IT gets for staff for funding. There is money in each of the uh, <coughs> that the building principals have discretion over for staff development. Plus, there's uh, a pretty good chunk of money that. The superintendent has for uh, professional development. So um, we certainly are not going to um, turn down any right. money that you think uh, would boost those accounts because that's the biggest return on investment you can make is in professional development. Well, I guess that's what I agree. I agree. And um, following up on Michael's comment, it would seem, well, we've said it. So thank you. Yep. Can I ask a question, John? Just to break the rule. I can't help it. <laughs> I'll, I'll it. It's going to be real quick. Well, actually, sure, not, go right ahead. Um, how do we store our data? I mean, we're shifting to Google, which is basically cloud storage. Before we had Microsoft, which I assume is stored on backup machines and hard drives on individual computers. We still have some or both. If, if people are truly using Google Docs and Google Apps for Education, then Google is storing that data. We still have local servers that, where data is stored. Would you predict over time that as more people use Google Docs, we'll have less of a need for uh, backup storage devices for, this, for our school system, and that's ultimately save money in the future? That certainly is the trend, the way things are looking. Thank you. Any other? Questions about the technology budget? Thank you, Gary. Thank you. So I guess we will move on to debt service. I probably should have said at the beginning, the technology department budget is down versus last year by $2,018. The debt service is also down. I believe that number is 34,000 
Do we have questions about debt, the debt service? The good news with debt service is that when we review the capital reserve plan is you'll have a funding mechanism coming up pretty shortly. You've got four different mortgages, if you will, two on the high school, one on Pond Cove, and uh, one on the middle school. And that one of those ones on the middle school will be retired in the next two or three years. And that will help to fund that capital reserve plan, which is, is in the works, if you just, you know, use that money for that purpose. So that's... That's a significant chunk of money. It's 500000 almost $600,000. What, and what's, when's the last payment on that? 2015, which sounds like a long ways away, but it's only three budgets after this one. Mm -hmm. so. The other ones are quite a ways. Oh. Does this debt service schedule include, uh, include the lease for the boiler, or is that... a this is only for capital yeah, it's for capitalized the that we've floated in the past for the major renovation projects at each of those schools. Thank you. The leases will be in Gary's budget for the boiler under <coughs> custodian facilities. Greg's budget. Greg, Greg's. what did I say, Gary? All right. Close confuses. Gary, <laughs> Greg's. <laughs> Names, not physical appearance. <laughs> So these are all fixed bonds that we really have no flexibility. These are, there's not anything we can really approve. No, there's not much you can do here, gang. There's not much we can do here. I believe that this was reduced in last year's budget as well through some refinancing that, um, if I remember correctly, that Mike did. But there, we don't have a lot of uh, levers to pull on this one. Unless you want to model the rest of the housing industry and go bankrupt on your mortgage payments. <laughs> it's pretty sad. And we get a bailout for that? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think that's a pretty good question. Are the bonds such that we can't refinance them? They have no... They have pre Payment penalties. I mean, why? If we have bonds in these various buildings and bond rates are the lowest they've ever been, are there something in those bond documents to prevent us from refinancing them? And I don't think so. I mean, I think Michael probably rides herd on that, and when the opportunity arises that he sees that we can save some money, um, he probably gets right after it. That's probably why we've got a thirty-four thousand dollar decrease. Is my anywhere near accurate, Pauline? Okay, <laughs> thank you. Well, okay, that's but they are, they can be refinanced, but I, my thinking, David, is that uh, Michael rides herd on that, and that's why we've got a decrease this year. And you weren't going to ask any questions on these accounts. <laughs> this, is, this is me asking no questions. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That's very good. Does that take care of debt service for everybody? Okay. <laughs> so, um, health services. Health services, that is the amount. That's an interesting account. I mean, I think in other years you want to integrate that into the building. It's kind of odd that health services sits. Um, as a separate account, it really should be in each principal's budget, but that's a story for another day. That's the money that they'll need to run, um, you know, the health services program, school nurses, in other words. Um, could I get a little clarity around what the equipment is? I see that it jumped, um, not from last year, but from the year before, from um, $800 to $2,500. Just wondering... Um, what sort of equipment we're buying? We're all looking mm -hmm. at each other, trying to come up with an answer to that. Probably we're replacing batteries for ADHDs. A couple of things. One is, yes, we did refrigerator replacement, and also part of that is for 
AED battery replacements? What? Refrigerators you know both years or refrigerator one year? Or? Because the $2,500 carries over. Why don't we research that and get you a precise answer on the 15th? That would be great. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, could I make a comment about health services, John, that is, yes. it's not numbers related, it's narrative related. And I did um, ask um, about the missing narrative at our last meeting. Um, mainly because it provides us, I think, an overview of how things are going with the kids and what sort. Part of that um, is included in that, and, and there's also information about mandates and health mandates and all of the, the, um, the services that our nursing staff has to provide. So I found that informational. That may be something that we want to do in a future budget meeting, but um, I... W as a board member, I would find that helpful. Um, Who did that narrative? Uh, Tatiana and Paula, I think, both did it. Um, but I found it helpful in understanding some of the issues um, that students were dealing with, in particular in the high school. Um, they gave us a, an overview of why kids were coming in, um, how much uh, support they had to provide for uh, dispensing medications and I think that's all very helpful information to us in terms of making sure we're providing the services that we need to be providing for kids. Um, so if that seems reasonable I'd like to look at pulling that into a business meeting if everyone agrees. Ken? That's reasonable and that's not a question. Okay. Okay. Any other questions on the health services budget? Well, that one looks like we're going to have to revisit. We don't have a tentative agreement on that because we owe you some information. So we're waiting for some information yeah. on that. But so just we'll for the benefit of, the, of anyone who might be watching, the health services budget is coming in at the exact same number, $10,290 at which it was last year. Okay, so from there we'll go on to an even easier one, volunteer services. Could Total budget is, is yeah. <laughs> $690 for volunteer services, the same number as last year. Um, do we have questions about volunteer services? I would only ask the... Um, DLTs and the admin, well, the administration. Is there anything in, vo in volunteer services that would be helpful? Because they, it reaches so many kids and affects the volunteers reach so many kids and affects so many teachers in a positive way. And I'm sure administration, how can we support that? Um, the community members and Gail, in Gail's work, you know, how can we really get? thank the community members and show that they're really worth, you know, uh, validate them, I guess is the right word. So is there, that's the only thing I would think, but I'm always seeming to add things to the budget, which, so if anyone has any uh, ideas, I don't know, who would they email Ken, mm -hmm. um, give Ken that information, but the, that's, source of people, I think, is army of people who are helping the schools. Amazing for the little money that is given to them. Yeah, Gail does a tremendous job with that program. It would be nice for the community know, to know, given their tax dollars, how many, how many hours does the volunteers work. We could probably put a figure on that to know what the community would know how much value is given to the schools that they're not having to pay for. I think that would be helpful for acceptance of any budget. It's 22,000. Hours? 22,000 hours. 900 wow. different volunteers. Yeah. So when, when she does her annual report, she gives all that information in terms of numbers and dollars and estimated um, value. 
I think that would be, I think that's great. I think it'd be great to have it as part of our budget package to let people know that when they're voting on the budget, they're getting 22,000 hours for free. I mean, minimum wage that's, what is, I don't know what minimum wage is nowadays, but that's about $150,000 anyway. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, it is. I, I, my only question is, um, well, first, I'll preface my question by saying that the, I think the schools, in my experience, is most deeply with Pond Cove, do a terrific job of, of, of welcoming volunteers into the schools and taking advantage of them. I, I've had experience in other districts where um, parents were, were treated much more uh, frequently as a necessary evil. Um, <laughs> 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 and so I, I, I'd like to thank you, Tom, for, for uh, what you've done at Pond Cove in terms of, um, of welcoming parents as volunteers. And my only question is, is this, is this budget of $690 in order to s sustain 22,000 hours of volunteer services, is it enough? Or, do we, or, or um, should the school board be considering doing more to, to help support that, those efforts? It's enough. <laughs> I haven't heard any, any requests for supplies and so on, but you're right about the spirit. I think that more recognition and support of the program would be good. It's a, the whole school of grace is Okay. Are there any other questions on volunteer services? That brings us to the office of the superintendent. Yes, you should be glad that uh, I'm not applying because this account would be a lot higher. I'll tell you. The <laughs> meager, <laughs> meager budget that you have here for the office of the superintendent. But, uh, <laughs> I'll let the new sheriff deal with that. In all seriousness, if you've got any specific questions, for the benefit of the public, uh, the kinds of money that budgeted here, uh, besides salary or stuff like photocopying leases and telephone expenses and advertising, printing, um, dues and conferences for the superintendent, superintendent staff. So if you have any specific questions about any of this stuff, and in all seriousness, I think it's a, it's a very good budget to support the new superintendent. I mean, it's not extravagant, but it does provide um, your new superintendent with access to what he or she will need. And this budget is up 0% over last year. It's the exact same number. Questions? Do the legal fees in the office of the superintendent uh, include uh, all the buildings, including instructional support or? Instructional support is the only one that's separate. They've got a separate budget line. It's about, what was it, 8,000? OK. So our total legal expenses is t are 27,000. That's what we budget. Can I ask, and uh, I asked this when we were talking, I think 8,000, my personal view is 8,000 is small for IS. That, that is just inherently a litigious area. Uh, can I point something out, David? Yeah. Um, it was $8,000 because the board took it to eight last year um, because they wanted a handle on what was coming in it, that is not a reflection at all on Dom's uh, uh, responsible budget planning. I, I don't think my um, comment was, was no, that way at but all. I didn't. I didn't want anyone to assume that IS was not putting the money in their budget that um, that they should be. I think Dom had asked for a certain amount the year before the board took it. I don't know. Is this ringing a bell? It's ringing a bell, and I, um, I could take this down a path which will cause conflict, so I won't take it down. Yeah. 8,000, uh, we took it down to 8,000 when what we wanted ports. Right, Remember. right, but that's why it's at 8,000 now. And if it's lower, um, that's because Dom was asked to present what he presented last year, or what he had last year, and that was a board decision. Okay, can I ask my question now? Because it wasn't about the 8,000. It was okay. about, for the total use of this system, we have 8,000 plus with $27,000. That seems like the, knowing what I do know about legal fees, 
that seems like a very fairly small number. Well, you know, it's the approach in special education. I mean, uh, Dom's using an approach that's um, parent-friendly, user-friendly. I mean, what we try to do is provide students with the services that they need in order to be successful. If you run special education by the letter of the law and you're just providing, in other words, taking a minimalist approach, then you better bolster that $8,000. But I don't think historically we've had um, too many due process hearings. I think uh, in the past five or six years, I'm looking at Dom, um, there's been a couple, zero. Okay, so, I mean, that's a pretty good track record. And it's those hearings that become costly. I I'm saying in the vicinity of 25 to 30,000, but I was involved with one, uh, it was $80,000. So, I mean, they, they go all over the place. But historically, we haven't had any of those uh, expenses in this district. I know we have one coming up. So I think we're pretty well set. You know, and the insurance policy covers it. Um, it's got a 5,000 deductible. So, I um, mean, that's the other good news with that account. So I think you've got enough um, in, the, in both those legal accounts. Now, having said that, I probably have an $80,000 hearing. But, uh, well, Murphy's Law. Again, to make it clear, I'm not simply talking about instructional. Last year we had a, a hearing where we had to hire counsel on suspension and expulsion of the student. There were expenses that a school has. A $22 million business with a $27,000 legal budget is, in my experience, small. Yeah, it is. But I, I think it's because the way, um, you know, we do business, quite frankly. I mean, the whole approach is, you know, it's a student-friendly school system. It's a parent-friendly school system. It's, it's not a school system that, um, you know, it wants parents on the same side of the fence. And so, I mean, if you're always going to war with people, uh, yeah, you've got to have a pretty hefty legal thing. But it isn't how this school system operates. It's a very different culture. So um, I think you've got enough there. I don't see us picking unnecessary fights with people or, you know, we'll provide more than what the law calls for in order to make sure that kids are successful. It costs us a little bit more on the instructional support, but it's, I think it saves you a ton in legal fees, plus it, you know, we've got a 90% customer satisfaction in special education. I mean, that's, that's pretty good with um, a challenging population. Other questions about the superintendent's budget? That's it? So, okay, so that gives us the opportunity to move uh, on to the budgets of each of the individual schools. Uh, and because Ken listed them this way, I guess we'll start with the high school. If you take the high school, I mean, if you take salaries out of the high school, you know, for the benefit of the public, we're spending $362,724. So, and just to give you a perspective, if you put salaries back in, you know, it costs us $4.6 million to operate the high school. So again, I point out, when you look at the principal's accounts, um, where the money is, isn't in the 362000 though I want you to ask Jeff, any questions that you have in order to develop clarity about what he's recommending and what I'm recommending. But um, when we get to staffing, as is the case with each of the, the schools, that's where the rubber hits the road, if you will, about costs. So questions about the high school budget? Just a quick one. I assume that there's a heading for each one of these columns a year. <laughs> you understand what I mean? I don't understand what you mean. Well, you got a column, and then you got another column, and you got another column. What differentiates the columns? Oh, yeah, there's yeah. Different school I see. year. The, yeah. yeah. I see. Sorry. So there's no heading on. 
the last one is our proposed one. Okay. So I bet. Yeah, we'll so you can label path. those 9, 10, and 11. The first column is the budget from 2000, this fiscal year 2009. The second, second column is fiscal year 2010, which is this year. And the third column is the difference. I mean, the fourth column is the difference. The fourth, fourth column is the delta, right, between nine, 10 and 11. Mary? Um, I have a question around um, pro any program changes. They're not listed in here, and we frequently get asked questions. And so um, if it's appropriate, I'd like to ask you if there are any program changes in this budget that um, we would want to know about. There, there really are not. Um, The only, there's no, no, there is no program change. There's a consideration of making AP biology, I was just talking to Kate about it, um, a, a senior class as opposed to what it has historically been as a junior class. But other than that, there are no proposals for program additions. Um, there are no proposals for program subtractions. Um, our kids will be signing up for classes um, over the next several weeks, we're a couple weeks away from starting it, um, but they'll be signing up for classes before the April vacation. Um, and then we always, from time to time, have to respond to particular signups. Um, if there are, for example, not enough students to sign up for a particular class, then we wouldn't offer that class. But it's not anything that we plan for. That's the kind of the normal course of business. But there are no proposals for new programs or deletions of programs of any sort. Kathy? Question about the parking fees. Um, I guess that would be under you. Yep. Um, last year the school board decided to institute $8,000 in parking fees. I'm interested in um, how much you collected of the 8000 and approximately the amount of time it took you and your staff to do that? Sure. Um, I don't know the exact number now. The last time I talked to Pauline, I think we were a little over $7,000. Um, as students get vehicles or kids get driver's licenses, um, there is a steady, a steady trickle, I guess, of additional fees that come in with students. Um, quite honestly, when the weather gets warmer in a couple weeks, Mr. Uh, Troy Henninger and I will um, begin to make occasional sweeps with the parking lot. I will say the board is aware that it wasn't my, I wasn't rah, rah, rah in favor of parking fees. And part of the reason was I was concerned, Kathy, about how much time it was going to take. But I will say that we have been very efficient um, in, in creating a system of essentially, and also very simple in creating a, sim a system of just putting under kids um, windshield wipers, warnings. Um, we didn't go crazy at the beginning. It was a process of education. And then we had, I think, at least two warnings that we gave to students under their windshield wipers before we began to get a little more stern. Um, and the vast majority of kids and parents cooperated very quickly. Um, we had to send, um, I think in the end, we got it down to just a very tiny handful who had received several different warnings. Um, and I sent a letter home to that group of parents. That precipitated a few letters to, to me and, which, and to the school board as well. But all in all, I, I will say quite honestly that it's taken less time. I think Troy and I have done three or four sweeps of the parking lot in the first couple months of school, and each one takes about 45 minutes. Thank you. Um, as you probably remember, I voted against the parking fees last I did, year. I didn't remember. <laughs> but, um, I, was out, I was outvoted by the board, but I continue not to support the parking fees for the high school, um, partially because it takes your time, but primarily because it concerns me that we are putting part of our budget um, um, 
issues on the backs of students who can park anywhere else in Cape Elizabeth for free, um, except for at the high school. So um, I will make that plea, and the board can do what they want with it. But I would prefer that we not have that as a $8,000 line item. Thank you. You're welcome. David? Uh, two questions together. Um, books and periodicals and staff development. My question is, I just want to make sure what happens at the high school isn't what we got stuck with the middle school. Do we have enough money in book replacements and so forth that we, we are keeping current? Yeah, I'm sorry. With professional development, are we doing enough on professional development? Yes. Um, yeah, I can, I can say very confidently, we never experienced the pinch of, you know, we have from year to year had swings in the tax budget, but we never got, had to get to the position that the middle school did for years of sort of putting off textbook purchases. So we have, I think, uh, uh, not a lavish, but a sufficient um, textbook budget. Um, the, and as I mentioned to the board the last time, we've done a little bit of shifting uh, for next year so I can address what I see as the, um, the oldest books or the most outdated books uh, from a content standpoint. So, and in professional development, um, again, I, and I think this probably goes for all three schools, um, one of the areas that we have not proposed over the last several years, despite budget cuts, that we should cut is professional development. And um, I'm always, one of the exciting things for me coming out of various school board budget meetings over the years is that the, the board has never asked for that or addressed it. I think we have a healthy um, professional development budget that um, is a great investment uh, in instruction and curriculum for teachers. Thank you. Yep. I'd like to just follow that up and, sure. and ask if you could give us an example of, of a textbook in the high school that's not being replaced um, in, in the next year's budget, but you'd like, but was on your short list. I'm trying to get a sense of how far out of date are we willing to be sure. without you know, getting it into the budget this year. Um, the one that comes to mind, I, I could certainly look for others, but the one that comes specifically to mind is I did have a request for AP government text to be replaced. Um, they are, I think at this point, five years old. Um, just because of the nature of the topic, it's one of those topics like biology that it's, we always want to not have really old books because they'll get really old very quickly. Uh, but it didn't seem to me that, you know, going one more year is something that we couldn't, um, we couldn't um, take on. Um, I know there were a couple of others as well. I, I can certainly get them for the board if, if, if you'd like to have that information. But by far the oldest books in the school that actually didn't, still didn't match how old some of the books that Steve was talking about um, are the French books, French three books. Um, and there are literally three different versions of them with three different colors. And I was remiss. Um, and so different teachers use different versions of the book. Um, honestly, I was remiss for not being aware uh, of how frugal our foreign language department had been over the years in putting up with that text. Otherwise, I would have told them, no, we've got we to gotta replace those things. I did tell them with the last budget year, in other words, for this year, that they needed to replace the, the counterpart almost as old text in Spanish. Um, so those are being actually purchased with this year's budget money, and those new texts will be replaced as well. So again, I would say that, um, but those 20 year or 20 plus year texts are a very rare exception at the high school. I think our books typically are, you know, we allow them to go depending on, again, depending on content area, depending on subject area, you know, five, seven years, something like that. Thank you. Yep. See, Steve, how conscious you've made us of books now. What a good job you've done. <laughs> John, I have a um, question. Hey. Um, I've noticed in some of the classes, students are, at, are they're offered that they can buy their own textbooks so they yes. can write in them and therefore for $50, whatever. Um, 
And then I've seen some other textbooks that have come home to my house that are pretty beat up, um, which I feel that my family's responsible for replacing those because the way they carry them back to forth to school. How are your textbooks, guys? Um, four textbooks look awful, and I wouldn't want to give them to somebody else. Right. Do we follow up on care? By, by individuals? Yes, we do. The, at the end of the year, um, the teachers collect back the books that they've issued to the students at the beginning of the year if the books are in condition, which sometimes they are, where we don't think we can give those out to another, to next year's students, then we charge the student and the family for those texts. Um, and we send out letters at the beginning of each summer reminding parents and students of that obligation, or sometimes they're lost as well. Um, the ultimate enforcement mechanism at the high school for replacement of those books and collecting that money is we don't allow kids to get graduation okay. caps and gowns. We don't allow them to get away from the system okay. um, without catching up on their debts and obligations. And so it, it works? Thank it you. works. It does work, yes. I'm going to ask one follow-up question. I'm just surprised if I have the right line. Fifteen hundred dollars is that? It's called staff development. Is that professional development? I think you're look. At, I think that's probably the office of the principal, David. Is that where you are? Yes. I think because fifteen hundred, I believe, is what is in my head is staff development. Just for the that is for the office of the principal. That's for the assistant principal and myself, David. That's what that's for. Um, the larger staff development monies are on the next page, at the very top of the page. Uh, there are two accounts. They, they're the two accounts in the third column over that total $26,570. Thank you for yep. putting that out for me. I, I, didn't think that, I wasn't sure why you were so happy with 1500 bucks. No, I would not I be happy with $1,500 for the entire staff. I, just, I, I didn't read it correctly. Sorry. Oh, no problem. Any other questions? Okay. Um, maybe, John, you can answer this, or Ken can answer this at another time, but how do the grants come in from CEF and um, the parent associations? How, with staff development, if we need grants for staff development, mm -hmm. um, Ken, can you help me resolve? I've never quite gotten the relationship if we're doing okay on the budget line for staff development, but we still need grants, and I believe we have a few grants have come in for staff in, in good size. Um, that's a need instead of a want. Is that how you, we care, how we make a difference? Well, I think some of the um, things that, you, that we normally can't afford in a school budget, um, like sending teachers to a significant professional development opportunity, sending an English teacher to the National English Teachers Conference, or sending two or three of them. I mean, we can't budget that, um, particularly in, during these economic times. So it's great that you've got CEF to fund experiences like that. Um, and we've got the kind of teachers here who would uh, just flourish with those kinds of opportunities. I mean. There are people who are going to go to them and take full advantage of that kind of experience. So um, that's one of the conversations I've had uh, with CEF, and they seem very receptive is in providing the kinds of professional development experiences that are probably too costly to put into a school budget, but that would uh, really be an upgrade uh, for whoever gets to do that. And they have funded some of those historically. And then how I, I can give a specific example of that, Kate, if that would be helpful. No. Um, you know, this may actually, um, with the support of CEF and also a healthy contribution from the school budget, I'm going to be able to send a team of five people from the high school, Troy Henninger, the assistant principal, plus four teachers, and Steve is sending five staff members from the middle school to a conference in Chicago, Illinois, about professional learning communities. Um, we are building sort of the critical mass of teachers who have had that experience. Um, you know, 
and so that's that's the kind of thing that if I were, and, and I think the total cost of that between the two schools is probably in the neighborhood of ten thousand dollars or so, uh, probably about five thousand. Well, it's actually a little more than that. I think it might be a total cost of twelve to fourteen thousand dollars. But CEEP is helping us with a very generous contribution to that. That's the kind of thing that if I had to, I would either only send one or two people, right. or if I sent five people from the high school, it would be a huge percentage of our professional development. So there is a need for those special occasions to give teachers special opportunities um, that involve especially transportation and hotel. Thank, Thank you. you. Yep. Oh, I actually had one question. Yeah. Um, I know last meeting we talked about debate, and then I had a chat with you yep. um, in terms of how much that would cost to add. And then I think we also talked about other extracurriculars that we right. thought were underfunded. Yep. Um, yeah, Matt came in, the next, I think, the day after the last school board meeting and asked me how much debate would cost. I haven't costed it out in detail, but I think roughly it would be if the board wished to add debate um, about between the stipend and transportation and judges' fees. Um, there's one other category, but that's most of it. Um, around four to five thousand um, dollars. And what I explained to Matt is that I am completely in favor of conceptually the idea of adding debate. I think it's a particularly Lincoln. Lincoln-Douglas debate. I am not at all in favor of adding another segment of debate, which is called policy debate. For That's a whole other discussion. <laughs> but Lincoln-Douglas debate, and then I guess there's a public forum debate, because I've since talked to Lisa Melanson, who is interested in advising it if it's added, um, are tremendously valuable programs. My concern is, and the reason I didn't put it in, is number one, we had made a decision as a DLT that we were not going to come to the board and with a proposal this, this budget year to add any new programs. And frankly, there are some programs, um, extracurricular programs in the high school that right now are underfunded compared to uh, what, I, in my view, they should be. Um, one of the ones that ironically is underfunded is speech. Um, and and that, is, that is the result of the incredible growth in the speech program over the last couple of years. It's, it's, it's uh, not a victim by any means, but... Um, there is not as much money in the budget to support the speech program. A couple of others as well, World Affairs Council. I would never envision, for example, that we would be able to or necessarily even want to pay for all of the expenses associated with World Affairs Council, because honestly, because it involves faraway travel and that sort of thing. But, but honestly, we barely keep up with the stipend uh, to support World Affairs Council. And there's a couple of other examples as well. Um, so my, the reason I didn't put in debate is, number one, about the nature of this budget year and, and, and some competing considerations from other extracurricular activities that in my view are underfunded to begin with. But if the board wants to <laughs> tell me to add debate, it will not, not, you know, I won't be opposed to it. But that's uh, roughly, I think, what it would cost. Uh, we would prefer, I mean, if you, if it, it's no different than budget reduction. I mean, if you feel like um, the budget is too skinny, um, you know, give me an idea of how much more you think the community can afford, and I'll prioritize where I think the priority would be with those extra funds, as opposed to you picking and choosing your special projects. Um, I don't think that's a good way to do budget addition or budget reduction. You don't have to pay attention to what I say, but you've got to give me the opportunity to present to you what I consider the priority for extra funding. Right. Debate might be on there, um, but I think you've got some other things that are bigger priority items. And I don't have anything against debate. A debate's a wonderful activity for students, but um, maybe there's other ways of those um, getting the debate team off the ground like we do with some other sport teams and stuff like that. Yep. I, I think it is important for the public to hear what we're not spending money on as well as what we are spending on. So it's helpful to learn, thanks for asking the question, Matt, about what we're not spending money on that would be good for our school. Um, I would rely on you to, if Jeff was to suggest you what it is we should consider. I'm a little concerned to hear that we have programs 
that you consider to be existing programs very successful that are underfunded. That bothers me a bit, as opposed to starting a new program. And I guess I would like to hear about existing programs that are extremely popular, you think have special value, but are underfunded. I think I would like, I would, I alone, in, or the, suggest the school committee consider asking you to give those to Ken and take a look at them. Yeah, and I think it's the way that we present that. We can't do it in a hand-wringing, you know, the sky is falling um, approach because you've got a budget that's, that's going to support a high-performing school system here. Um, and to think that you're, I mean, schools have insatiable needs. You're never going to be able to fund all of our needs. Um, but be glad to point out some things that are underfunded. I mean, if you turn to athletics here, I mean, if you just look at what the fundraising goes on in this community, that will lead you to the answer to your question. There's tremendous, tremendous amount of fundraising going on here. And some of it goes to that needs to want, not to want, you know, what I talked to you about before. Right. I really I just, think I, that's where you could spend some valuable time with, um, with the new superintendent, really getting a handle on what you think as a school board you should be providing and what you should be relying on CEF booster groups and others. I was actually thinking more micro. If we have a program, it must have already meant the need column. To have it underfunded bothers me. As to whether or not you have a new program, then it is a need versus, I can never remember your second prong. Want. Want. <laughs> um, that's a completely different discussion. But if we have an existing program that's underfunded, I guess that bothers me. And I, I guess I would, I would just say that um, the school budget, even for the last few years, as, as things have, um, as, as we've had difficult budget years, really we've been doing okay. And perhaps um, you, you're almost asking me to highlight some just minor tweaks that I make from year to year in to increase transportation here or to increase this there. For example, over the last few years, despite terrible budgets, I have increased this, the science team has become incredibly popular, and I have been able to, um, to, to direct some, a little bit more money that way. And so that's, those are kind of the minor tweaks that happen kind of behind the scenes to try to take those things into account. And I think um, the budgets that the board has approved has allowed us to continue to do that, um, I guess slowly and quietly, but to great benefit for the students. Any other questions for Jeff? No? Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So that brings us to the middle school. And I'll mention the same thing um, that I did regarding Jeff's budget. The middle school is 172000 if you uh, take out the salaries, um, you know, you put the salaries back in and it, you know, it's $3.7 million to operate the middle school. So you can see, that, you know, in comparison, $172,000 where the money is at all of our schools is in people. But Steve is here to answer any specific questions you have about the $172,000. There is another revenue source here too. If we started a bike fee, you charge half the price that they, you know, two wheels will charge half the price of the four wheels at the high school. So. Make it a little different. I'm going to vote against that, too. <laughs> <laughs> Trikes from Punk Over. Right? I'll have to prorate those. Questions? Questions? Hey. Uh, Mary, you asked about considerations, oh. or John did. Somebody asked earlier to Jeff about considerations, programs, and stuff like that. We're, we're holding fast with the programs we have as well. We've got one consideration on, on what RTI should actually look like for our 7th and 8th grade next year, but we're still working through some ideas, but there's no additional programs and things like that. I guess I would follow Mary's question, which is... Um, I'm learning is a good one. 
any uh, changes in the programming that would are important to um, talk about? That are important what? The, that are important for the school board to know, um, especially around. Yeah, just that, just that response to intervention in the seventh and eighth grade. What's what's going to be most effective? And as you work with kids and you adjust your programs and you try to figure out which are the parts that are that are going to do it and which which don't seem to be making a difference. So we've got our response to intervention, and then we have executive functioning services, and so we're trying to. We're just kicking around some ideas now and doing a little bit of research, and, and we hope to uh, bring in some information from our uh, a conference that some people are going to in Boston, and then in the uh, Chicago conference on pyramid response to intervention. And I would assume there's no line item for RTI right now, or for an increasing that because it's not uh, a mandated program at this point. We're not increasing it because we think we've got the personnel to provide Take kids with the support services that they need. Okay. We may rearrange how we provide those services, but it's not going to be a significant difference okay. in delivery. I'm sorry to ask that question twice. I thought you were talking about um, what programs to keep, what mm -hmm. you know, classes, to keep, extracurriculars to keep in. So, oh, okay. um, thank you. Right. I have a question, and this is, I, I'm sure, my oversight. Um, Chiwanki, I didn't see an item, a line item in here. Um, is that 100% funded by parents yes. now? Yeah, it's about 43000 I think it's $41,000, $43,000. So that covers staff stipends and... It covers transportation, staff stipends, uh, educational technician overtime. Okay. It covers uh, uh, any... Uh, additional needs we may have due to medical concerns or something like that. Okay. I'm sorry I missed that. I, you may have mentioned that in the past. Um, just, um, at the last, when we were in the, the round table discussion, somebody asked me something about what happens with that. But you know, it's just, mm -hmm. I just mentioned that it was parent, parent support. There is 100%. Wow. There isn't any funding for it in the school budget. David? Um, I, I had trouble hearing what um, Kate was asking, and she may have asked this, is there any reduction in programs or elimination of programs? No. Um, the other question I have is, I just want to make sure we're still in status quo. Last year we had a, uh, a lively debate about um, team teaching in fifth and sixth and more of a junior high model for seventh and eighth. Is that still and we put that off to this year or maybe a future year about how we're going to, is that still, um, we still have roughly um, a junior high model for seventh and eighth grade and a middle school model for fifth and sixth grade? Yeah, fifth and sixth grade, team structures, seventh and eighth grade, kids rotate through teachers. Uh, seventh grade this year, they have, if you have, whoever you have for language arts, it's also your social studies teacher. Next year, the eighth grade will look the same way. So, but it's not a team structure. It's not like you and I are on the same team and we have this pool of okay. kids. You said that people who, so somebody has a dual, uh, they teach social studies and language arts? In the seventh and eighth grade, all of the teachers who teach language arts also teach social studies. Has that always been that way? Um, in the seventh and eighth grade, almost all the time. But there are some teachers who were, for instance, Deb Casey, a couple of, in, not this year, but in previous years, has been math and social studies. But this year, they're all aligned for language arts and social studies. But well, I guess I mean that's not something that's happened in the last couple of years. It's been this year is the first year that that's been true of every case. Um, most it's mostly been true other years. But for math and science, you get a math teacher teaching math and a science teacher teaching science. Yep. And the only... And those people teach two subjects, so there isn't anybody... Uh, I don't think there's anybody who's teaching just science. So if you're, if you're in this particular math class and that person teaches that math class, you may have that person for science, but it's due to scheduling and trying to fit your classes in. So you have... It's not people with teaching, I, I can only use a term I'm more familiar with, dual majors, 
We may teach them math and science. You only have one person in the seventh and eighth grade who's not, who doesn't teach, uh, who is not teaching this year or next year so far in our preliminary schedules to teach more than one subject. And that's because um, we have more uh, levels of math, so I need more, I need uh, Deb Casey, who's in the seventh grade, to also pick up an eighth grade math this year, and she'll probably do the same thing next year. I'm, I guess I'm tired, I'm getting slow, or I'm, I'm getting slow when I'm talking. David, there's no changes to how the middle school's been operating. I don't know if that I helps. thought he just told me that there was. That's what I was no. trying to figure out. No, I, don't, I didn't hear him say that. I think historically uh, the way the middle school is going to operate next year is the same as always has been. Does that help? No. I think the only change that, I mean, I have noticed, it, and you said this, was that social studies teachers um, Teach English, correct? Yes. And English teachers t teach social studies. That's that far. Okay. And I heard math teaching science and science teaching math. Well, everybody's, exactly. almost everybody in the school has always taught. Same, same as every other year. Almost everyone in the school has taught uh, two subjects. And we're continuing that. And so there's not, there's not a change in any kind of plan on the fact that almost everyone is almost entirely dual certified and, and always has been since I've been at the school. I'm mindful that we're at a budget workshop, so some of the issues maybe that are outside the scope might be a better venue to discuss maybe some of the, these questions. And I'm mindful that you've been here a long time. I just had a couple budget questions I thought we could get to. Just want to, I saw on software, uh, the budget, the software budget for the middle school is yes. a bigger number than it is for the technology district wide, and you, I'm sure we need to research it. And if there's not an easy answer, I, I, that's just something that sh was curious. Yes. On um, we have uh, because we're at, at the middle school, we have the laptops, the one to one. Okay. So we have a number of site licenses that are paid for out of this account. We have explorelearning.com. Discovery, education, health, discovery, education, science. Uh, we have uh, Plato site licenses we share with Dom, Lexia site licenses, uh, a brain pop. So all of those pieces, IXL math, they're all paid out of this account. If the laptops were at the high school, you'd see that same number applied to the high school. Thank you very much. Did you have another one, Michael? No. Anyone else? Did we get a vote on that bicycle? <laughs> <laughs> Last but not least, Tom Cove and the amount of money outside of salary is $130,000. Uh, with salary, it's $3.3 million. At Pond Cove, you might remember, um, because of enrollment decreases, we we're able to eliminate one teaching position, and we also have a half-time reading teacher that was funded with um, federal stimulus money that uh, we will not be funding next year. Okay. So Pond Cove, because of enrollment swings, are down one and a half teachers. Ken, did you anticipate questions on those staffing? No, I just uh, sort of issues tonight, or you just wanted to give that over. Yeah, mm -hmm. setting the plate. Okay. Because I bet I I, I I trust we'll have questions along those lines, but I thought that that was yep. not tonight's. Okay. Good good point. Yeah. Other questions? Tom, I know you tried to explain this at the last meeting, and I'm just learning, but maybe just comment on the uh, staff development uh, reading recovery. From zero to six thousand, just for informational purposes. Right, that, that's an, an official the national program. So, in order for us to sustain membership in that for professional development and be part of the data collection service that they provide, it's two thousand dollars for each reading recovery teacher. That also supports the reading recovery network in Maine and other states too. Thank you.
Okay. Is it an every year, every uh, two years membership fee? It's annual. And so why we didn't pay for it last year? We did, but in, in the, the budget trials and tribulations, it, it dropped out as a line item, so we had to take it from other professional development. Remember all the negotiations right. we went okay. through? And then when it came, uh, it finally showed up in print, it was missing, so we had to use other, um, had to use professional development funds to do it. So are we restoring that, the, essentially, that by, do it, by restoring this funding, we're restoring the other professional development, which right. presumably we right. couldn't pay for. Right, we, we had to pay. drain that account by, uh, by $6,000, right? Okay. Yeah. Other questions on Pankov? I guess I have one more. When we put the, um, when Alan helped free, froze the insert train staff development and supplies, being that staff development is so important, is anyone having to, I'm assuming that staff either took care of their requirements um, for their certificate by themselves or are they re, um, asking for reimbursement? For this right. year, how is that working? You, you, you kept the course reimbursement line there, which helped. But this year, since the TAP has been turned on for professional development, uh, we're, we're doing it again. And we, we have partnerships, too, with, with SEEP, which would really help. And just to follow up on what Jeff said, the SEEP grants come from within, too. It comes from individual teachers and things that come up during, during the school year. So you get, I hate to use the term, but you get a synergy from it. You get a lot out of that. And the Cape Elizabeth has traditionally supported that as a significant uh, percentage of the budget. And uh, the teachers, I think that's one of the reasons teachers stay here, because of that professional development. Thank you. No other questions? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for your kind comments about the volunteer program. That has helped sustain us, too, through the tight budget years. And uh, Kate's description is accurate. It is an army of people in and out. And I was shocked to hear that some people, some schools don't welcome parents. And so we really depend on it. Thanks. There are also a, 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 a many, many non-parent volunteers yeah. in, in that army. I know um, community members who are not parents who are giving their time. It's, it, it really is remarkable. Uh, it's, it's, it's a great thing to do. Yep. Thank you, Tom. Yep. Uh, so I probably should have just summed up after each one of these accounts to ensure that we were essentially arriving at a tentative agreement. Um, and I, I didn't do that, so I don't know. Um, uh, I think that's what we've done, but I know there were some open issues. Uh, I'll just, Kathy, for example, had a, a line item in the high school budget or, or a revenue item in the high school budget that should, mm -hmm. should, like, should, should like to see change. I don't know how we uh, want to approach sort of addressing that kind of thing. Uh, well, I think you've got tentative agreement on all of these accounts with the exception of health services. Where we're uh, waiting for something. For, right. Right. Uh, so uh, that's what I have in my notes yeah. too. But so unless um, I mean that just means you're saying these for the time being are good, and we're going to focus on the big ticket items starting at our next meeting, with the exception of health services. And you can discuss Kathy's idea when we do the three-year plan on revenue because that's that's part of the revenue picture okay. at eight thousand dollars. So okay. Is the, is the board comfortable with that? Sure. The only question I have is I, I, we, we did raise, but I didn't see any consensus on, unless Ken gave us our consensus, uh, about underfunded, possible underfunded extracurricular activities at the school. Is that something that we were going to have Jeff come to you about, or did we decide not to do it? I didn't hear any decision on that. I heard that, heard that raise, but I didn't see us make a decision on it. We can discuss, um, you know, how you want to proceed with that. The, the only point I made was, you know, if you want to add <clears throat> money to the budget, uh, I, I want 
crack at the, how that looks in priority. And you can, and I use debate as an example. You know, that might not be at the top of my priority, putting money back in. So that's the only comment I made. As far as unfunded thing, you know, we, we can talk about it at our next meeting, um, some things that are underfunded. And at some point in time, you can ask me, if you had more money, where would you put the money back in, as opposed to asking the principals. I think it's much better to ask the superintendent that question because the superintendent has a K through 12 perspective. Tom knows what the priorities are at Pong Cove. Steve knows what they are at the middle school, and Jeff knows what they are at the high school. But the superintendent knows what's the K through 12 priority. Does that make sense? Uh, it does for new programs. I guess my question was, what are we going to do about underfunded programs? Are we going to just drop that one, or you and Jeff? Yeah, I'd like to drop it, but if you guys want to discuss it, we'll, well discuss I, I, it. I just guess <laughs> we, I don't think we have a resolution. I've raised it. Um, I thought Jeff would talk to you. And I, I think the resolution that Ken is proposing is that if the board believes for any reason throughout this, the course of this workshop process that there is insufficient funds in the budget that the board ought to advise the superintendent of that belief and that the superintendent will will come back to the board with his recommendation for okay, okay. How, to, how do I how raise to, that because I have heard that there may be some underfunded extracurricular how do I raise it so we ask him to take a look at it I think we that we, we're going to arrive at that uh, by the end of the, our workshop process, we're going to have to arrive at a sense of whether we believe this is a, an appropriate budget or whether the budget is too low or too high. And then if, if, if we arrive at one of those latter two, we would ask Ken for his uh, recommendation on where additional funds would be taken out or, or put back into the budget. So when, when he summarizes, or you summarize that we're all okay with all three schools, that doesn't moot my question about whether or not some, some extracurricular activities are unfund, underfunded. Can, can I make a suggestion? I'm mindful we've gone through maybe 15% uh, of the total dollars in the budget. So I think Ken's point is when we look at salaries and benefits that are 80% of the budget and some of the revenue items that you had mentioned, David, will have a broader perspective on what, what's the, what are total areas we want to pursue and then we can prioritize, you know, in terms of what warrants follow-up work. That's fine with me. I just don't want it foreclosed, which is what I heard. T tentative agreement, I think, in Ken's email, you know, tentative, that nothing's completed. We're not approving any specific area tonight, so if we go through the whole process, David, I think you'll have a lot of your an opportunity for us to look at all the different questions you have and then um, prioritize what warrants follow up. Okay, I, I didn't get that email. Is that how we're going to? So when you say we are all okay with those, this is the we still have the chance to raise these issues at the end. You weren't going to ask any questions tonight. <laughs> what happens well, to that if I idea? Again, an answer for my asked this question four times. Maybe I would stop asking him. But you, I, you need to read your emails because he, <laughs> was, he did. Ken did outline and, this pretty well. Uh, okay. There you go. Thank you, but I don't get my emails where I am now. All right. We will satisfy your need, David, to discuss unfunded programs. Thank you. That, okay. That answers my question. That took ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that why. I know that took 10 minutes. I think that brings us to the end of tonight's meeting. And I just wanted to mention one thing at our next budget workshop is where we start hitting the big ticket items, but there'll be a need for a short business portion, which I know is different from how you've operated in the past, but we've got to award the um, boiler contracts and the asbestos. So there will be a short business portion to that meeting. May I ask a question about that meeting? Um, Pauline had. Um, mentioned that it may have been moved to the Jordan Conference Room from the Community Center. Do you, does anyone? Is, that's the one next week. Is that correct? Yeah, we're looking for a location for that because I think there's something going on in the high school library where we normally have it. Or is that so. the last meeting is in the high school library actually? So that's the meeting that may be changed. So.
Okay. So everybody check your emails. We'll, we'll confirm and we'll send out an agenda for that meeting okay. in advance. Great. Thank you. Thank you.